Let's learn how to paint textured fur surfaces today. Welcome back to the channel collectors. So today we are going to be going more in depth a bit about technique and a bit about uh, colors to see how we can recreate fur textures on miniatures. Okay, first and foremost I'm going to start introducing some concepts. So I'm going to be uh, roughly scratching out some surfaces. So you would really need a very dry brush in this technique. Okay, so dry brush you get to paint thinner lines. And secondly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to very, very carefully, um, I don't know, call it stippling. I'll be stippling some fur textures, as you guys can see in the diagram here. So in this diagram, what you guys can see is that the less concentrated area also serves as some degree of transition for this video. Okay, when you want to be painting fur surfaces, I want you guys to be focusing on the form of the shape rather than just blotting in fur textures because the shape of the highlight is equally as important as how small you draw these lines are. Alright, so if you're ready, let us begin. Alright, so welcome back to another video collectors. Um, in this tutorial, the colors are not so important, but then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you guys my technique of how I do fur texturing. Here are the colors that are being used. Warm yellow, orange, red, red oxide, black, from Chimera range and ivory and German camo from Vallejo model colors. So right now I'm mixing the base colors and the first highlight. So what we are doing, we are going to be painting a beagle and these are the colors that we will be using for the first step. So right now I'm just going to be base coating. Um, there's nothing too special about this stage. What you should be focusing on is achieving a smooth and even coat around the areas that should be brown on this beagle okay so you want to do this in one direction and coat the brown patches as evenly as possible don't rush do this slowly So once the base coat is done, we need to dry the brush to make sure that it's almost completely dry before placing the first highlights. So with, with the brush very dry, you are able to control your brush strokes even better. So my technique for doing this is that I place a block of paint like this on the highlight areas and then I go dry the brush even more with a very dry brush, I start to feather out, I start to feather out the textures. So I'll be creating the next highlight over here using black, German beige and a bit of red oxide. 
and just a touch of ivory to make these highlights slightly brighter. With all subsequent stages right now, I'll be using the same technique. Put on some paint. Okay, so as you guys can see, I put on some paint over here. Quickly, next I will start to dry off the paint on a sponge to make sure that the paint is dry. You got to do this pretty quickly before the previous layer is dry and you start to feather up some shapes so that you can start to see the fur texture appearing on this. This isn't limited to animals. You can do this for fur coats. You can do this for, for uh, the under layers of, of leathers. Anything that you want to have a soft furry surface, you can do this even on, on human bodies where you want areas where there is uh, hair sticking out, you can consider using this technique. Okay, so I'll just speed these up so that you can uh, slowly have a look at the technique and enjoy. At this stage, what I'm doing is I'm also making sure that the volumes are well covered so that the form of the face, rather the form of the dog's head is well illustrated. So this is the result after two highlights. So I'll be gradually placing more highlights also. So at this stage, what I'm doing is that I'm placing a block of uh, wet paint again and I'll start to feather it very slightly. But uh, what's different is sometimes I have areas of paint that are not attached to the huge block slightly off to create a softer surface as you guys can see over here. As you guys can see this is the result so far I'm gonna mix a more extreme highlight now uh, being more biased towards uh, German beach and uh, Vallejo ivory okay so with this extreme highlight I'll be using the same technique but what's important about this you should remember that you are placing a highlight and the highlight should follow the shape of the form okay so forgive the, the blurredness here just trying to sort out my camera for that but yes here we are so once the shape is correct you can start texturing the area so that while the area is textured it still it still communicates the form of the miniature rather than having a weird shaped highlight that kind of deforms the animal's head okay Right now, with an even higher highlight, I'm creating more textures. Just sparsely painting in hairs on the top of the head. So that every single bit of this miniature has uh, hairs. One tip that I can give you is that you want to try to make the hairs in the same direction and it will make the miniature look a lot more realistic. So right now with a bit of uh, dark brown mixed black and red oxide I'm going to start to refine the edges So say for example the eyes The ears and then the wrinkles on the beagle's head So with uh, pure Ivory, I'm also texturing the white areas so that every single exposed part 
looks furry and feels furry. So as a conclusion, you should be focusing on the entire volume of the miniature rather than just placing textures randomly, okay? The shape of the highlight is important as you guys can see very shortly as the miniature comes into focus. Yep, there we are. So collectors, what do you think about this fur texturing video? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this useful because I particularly like to use this technique on many many different surfaces so that it sort of communicates some smooth surfaces and some rough surfaces and some furry surfaces to give a lot of um, interest onto the miniature, okay? So if you found this video useful, please now, right now, please go and like the, like the video also, if you haven't subscribed yet or you subscribed already, go and check. Go and subscribe now. Just go and subscribe now. I wait for you. Okay? Also, hit the bell notification icon. Please. Because so that you know when we post the next video, we post videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and sometimes Saturdays. Okay? And if you really want to support the channel, please head on to our Patreon. Now. Okay? Now. Please. Okay. And I would like to thank my patrons for being so supportive in me creating content like this. Uh, in this very difficult period of time, it really helps to know that people still want to support us and I can create content like this and I hope all of us become better painters together. So to my patrons, you guys get early access to many of my tutorials and exclusive content on my Patreon so that you guys and me, we get to become better painters together. You guys get to ask me questions also, so don't forget we can always have an online um, we can always have an online consultation and I'll be very happy to show you what I think about your miniature. Okay? Until next video, I hope to see you soon.